So this month I've been pretty honed in on mathematical ideas around tiling and tiling problems. But last week's video was like super technical in comparison to most of the stuff that I've done. And it was also really long. So this week I kind of wanted to do a shorter video that outlines kind of the history behind this hundred plus year old problem that just recently in 2017, a paper was submitted to try and do an exhaustive search for solutions to this problem. And pending that paper's acceptance, this problem will be closed, which is really cool. Um, and the reason that I think it's really cool is that the problem is, eh, the problem feels a bit more simple than the average open problem. So to give you a little bit of background, this problem comes from the uh, weirdness of tiling the plane with regular polygons. So you can tile the plane with regular triangles and regular quadrilaterals and regular hexagons, but you can't do it with pentagons. And for some reason that feels weird. And there's some more stuff there that's been discovered by trying to like force a regular pentagon into a tiling that I wanted to sort of show off next week or talk about, I'm not sure if I'm gonna talk about it or just show you something cool. Um, that is to be bleh, that is to be determined at this point. But anyway, um, the problem then is, well, since these regular pentagons can't do the thing we want them to do, is there any way to lax the conditions on regularity and use pentagons to tile the plane? So, this problem is the, and it's got a heck of a name. It is the convex monohedral pentagonal tiling problem. And the first set of solutions to this problem is attributed to Reinhardt, who in 1918 found the first set of five types of solutions to this problem. What's really cool about Reinhardt's solutions is that all of his solutions have lots of degrees of freedom. The only thing required of the type one solution that he discovered were a few angle dependencies. And then types two through five all have progressively more restrictive conditions, but they start to incorporate different equalities on side length. So for each of these classes of solutions, I've gone ahead and cut out a pentagon that fits the conditions of its corresponding type. And then I've also tried to give a, what's called a tiling primitive. A tiling primitive is just a small linking of tiles that sort of feeds the intuition that this thing could tile the entire plane. Um, there's a little bit more technical stuff going on there with what that means, but um, I'm trying to avoid that today. So this is what you get. So my favorite one of these is probably Reinhardt's third solution because it illustrates a common thing that mathematicians try to do when they want to prove something. If you look at the third solution, you might notice that the primitive for that third solution is just a hexagon that's been cut up in a really special way to make sure that each piece of the hexagon is just a pentagon. What makes that really cool is that essentially in order to get to the type three solution, Reinhardt either intentionally or unintentionally took something that he knew could tile the plane and then broke it up into smaller pieces that he knew could tile the plane because they fit together to form something that itself could tile the plane. Um, that was a lot of me saying it can tile the plane, but what I mean is that he took a simpler solution and forced it to work for this more complicated case where we're trying to work with pentagons. Um, and that I think is pretty cool. So the next couple of solutions didn't come for another 50 years. Uh, in 1968, Kirshner found the next three types of solutions, type six, seven, and eight. I'm numbering them because there's a weird one coming up and it won't just be in numerical order. But moving on, Kirshner was sort of a little in his head a little bit, I think, at least, I don't know if the dude's still alive, but he thought he found all of the solutions, uh, which, Mind you, tiling the plane with convex pentagons is a hard thing to do. It's not easy, but still, his solutions were a little bit more restrictive than Reinhardt's solutions, but they weren't super, super restrictive. As we'll see, there are some that are pretty specific later on. 
But anyway, aside from that, here are types six, seven, and eight and their corresponding primitives. So just seven years after Kirshner made his huge claim that these eight types of convex pentagons were the only eight types to tile the plane, um, we had this dude, which I feel weird just saying his last name because it's James the Third. Um, but James the Third found the tenth type of pentagon. So I know we skipped nine, but the typing, at least from my understanding of how the typing was set up, is to designate like how many degrees of freedom or how restrictive the classes are in terms of what side lengths and angles are required. So the cool thing about James solution is that it has a force 90 degree that is used heavily in the primitive. So if you look at the primitive, you get this weird like flaring thing happening. But anyway, after James found his solution, we then had three more sets of solutions that came along. First, Rice in 1977, then Stein in 1985, and then Mon McLeod and Von Barrow in 2015, which I think I wrote 2017 on the board. I meant 2015. 2017 was the date when the paper that's supposed to close this problem was submitted. For Rice, Stein, Mann, McLeod, and Von Barrow's solutions, I'm not going to go ahead and draw the primitive. I think that these five are a lot of fun to toy with yourself and sort of like struggle with <laughs> trying to figure out what the primitive is or how you would tile the plane with these pentagons. Um, but the cool thing to note about these, and as I've mentioned before, is that these are super restrictive. Rice found type 9, 11, 12, and 13. And type 9 is actually a little bit less restrictive than James III's solution. But all of Rice's other solutions are fairly restrictive and don't allow for that much freedom. Stein's is even more particular. And Mann, McLeod, and Von Barrow's solution doesn't really allow for any freedom at all. If you take a look at the conditions, once you choose one of your side links, you kind of just force the pentagon. So I know that this video has just been a survey of these pentagons that have this really nice property that they can tile the plane. But I think the thing to get out of this video is that math research is weird. This problem that first solutions came from a little over a hundred years now, or at least published ones from Reinhardt in 1918, were considered interesting because, well, it was something that no one had ever been able to do before with pentagons. So I guess my point here is that math is like this weird, naturally structured art. Not everyone is going to understand or appreciate different fields of math or math research as a whole. And someone that does math research in one field might not understand why something is appealing or considered um, interesting or beautiful in the research of another mathematical field. That being said, the same goes for art, right? A sculptor might not appreciate the work that goes into a painting and an abstract artist might not be appreciated for the thing that they're going for. Um, whereas someone who does high detail paintings or drawings might be more revered as someone who is being more technical because somehow that level of detail is valued more in the same way that applied mathematics is valued more for its uses in the real world. All analogies fall apart somewhere, but I think I got the gist of my point across. So anyway, this video was a little bit laxer. It's all I've got for you today at this point. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. As always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.